quite a number of insecticides can be found. And that is because of all the different uh, products that are in the cattle feed that are in turn um, uh, yeah, treated with all sorts of chemicals. So part, a major part of the reason why we have um, insecticides in the manure is because of the feed and uh, insecticide use in the production of cattle feed. So the sources of pollution on these livestock farms are related to um, the concentrated feed and uh, fodder, uh, the veterinary medicine, and also fly control. That is a very high use of chemicals also at dairy farms. Also the drinking water uh, with the contaminated surface water. Uh, yeah, the, the pollution of previous uh, farm use. So previous farmers have used all these chemicals and it is still a bit, uh, still present in the soil. And also from other farms and regions, uh, chemicals come. So you can see that normal manure in the field would look like this, where um, insects can be found on the manure. Uh, and uh, like this, but on most cattle farms, there is no insect of uh, of uh, insect life at all, and, uh, and and on the manure because of all these chemicals that is uh, uh, available. So, just to give you a very brief impression of what farmers are doing to do this. Well, they are uh, forming study groups to see how we can improve uh, uh, the fertility and to reduce the use of those chemicals. And one of the ways they are doing that is by uh, re-establishing the natural cycle, by reducing artificial fertilizer and concentrated feeds, and also reducing the use of uh, of, uh, of the chemicals and uh, focusing on restoring soil fertility and soil organic matter. That is an important uh, goal of most farmers. So what do we do at Natural Livestock Farming in the Netherlands? Well, we uh, promote uh, agriculture with a minimal uh, use of uh, chemicals and a minimal damage to the environment. And um, one of the, the way we work in the Netherlands is to promote the use of natural products. And with the support of um, uh, and, and continuous exchange between the four countries um, that are collaborating with their natural livestock farming, we are also now um, reintroducing herbs into our dairy farming system because that uh, practice was lost to a large extent. So many farms in the Netherlands are now reintroducing uh, herbs into the grassland. You can see that on this picture here, this is uh, the, instead of monocultures, uh, that is a, a, a new uh, practice of uh, having more herbs into the grassland. And another way of um, uh, working with herbs is to uh, with herbal products. And stable books were made on the use of ready-made herbal products uh, for the various species, like dairy and sheep and goats and chicken. And uh, that is another uh, activity within the Netherlands, which has now become uh, popular amongst the farmers. And most farmers in our country are now using herbal products again in the form, uh, in the form of these uh, herbal products. And uh, around 10% of the farmer has reintroduced these uh, herbs, but that number is growing very rapidly. So our main uh, question in our country is now, uh, do we want to continue with this skill enlargement 
and uh, and very high producing uh, with very high chemicals uh, for the world market or Shall we go more towards soil fertility and lower input farming and which we call nature inclusive farming? But it is uh, still a minority of farming doing this. So the government has not yet decided on this. We have, um, uh, this is a major governmental uh, question. We will have new um, elections uh, soon but this is a very big discussion in our country and it has not been decided where we will go so um, that is the reality we have uh, in our country uh, today so i hope uh, this was uh, clear for you uh, i'm uh, part of dutch farm experience as well that is uh, i share with uh, people on uh, the dutch farm experience uh, uh, in our country, but uh, very much part of natural livestock farming as well. So, thank you very much for your attention. And if you have any questions, uh, I would be happy to answer. Them. Thank you so much, ma'am, for your valuable insights and for presenting this amazing presentation. I'm sure that everyone here uh, gained a lot of insights through this presentation. Also, ma'am, there's a special request that uh, because uh, you shared so many insights through this presentation, it would be great if you could just share this presentation with my team so that we can gain the further insights and uh, yeah. it would be great for us. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you. So now, uh, I'm honored to have with us Mr. Himanshu Shekhar Sahu, the Deputy Director of the Department of Horticulture, Government of Odisha. I would like to welcome Sir to address the audience. Sir, are you here? Uh, yes, yes. yes. Good, good morning to all. Uh, today, I am the, got the privilege to uh, get an opportunity to tell something on your Brickha Ayurved. It is a great day for us. Uh, for our uh, agro Ayurved, the science of plants, uh, plant life, it mainly means, basically means Ayurved for trees. We, we are going mainly Ayurved for our human beings, but for uh, trees, it has been in, in, in anciently. There was many scriptures like Mahershi Prasad and Mahershi Suropala. They have also uh, mentioned many things to take care of Mrikha in Ayurved way. That is one. And another is one health. That is integrating and unifying approach of the uh, to sustainable uh, take the um, optimizing the health of people, animals and total ecosystem. So it is a very um, a good um, uh, topic for getting ourselves updated with our traditional knowledge as well as the advanced science technology nowadays such as the formalized one now is organic farming that is going on in all over India, all over India also also in also uh, in, the, in the world also use of compost in different way that is farmyard manure or vermi compost or any other um, compost uh, then integrated organic farming with use of some uh, plant plant parts like turmeric ginger and leaves of abstracts of neem and custard apple bell etc also the um, dairy products like cow urines, gomutra, then panchakabhyo, and also the agniyastra they are preparing nowadays. It is doing very well in the organic farming uh, in the field. The nimastra also is also used now by the many users of our Odisha um, farmers, and particularly in our In Western Odisha, we are looking more many farmers are going for Agniyastra, Nimastra and Brahmastra, which are giving actually very good 
result in the field. The yield also is not hampering in Titlagad of Balangir district. I had one um, broccoli cultivation and also some hybrid vegetables. They are going very well in the um, block of Muribal. That was very nice uh, to uh, similarly in uh, paddy cultivation, in ragi cultivation, in also uh, fruits cultivations. Many people are doing now uh, organic farming to have heard the uh, chemical uh, effect in the health of our human society as well as in our uh, ecolo ecological uh, diversity. So, I want to say the organic farming is a must required for our uh, Ayurved to take care of the plants as well as the society of the ecosystem. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for sharing your insights with all of us today. It's a pleasure hearing from you. So uh, now, moving forward, I would like to welcome Dr. Pragyanshri Mishra, ma'am, the organizing secretary, to finally deliver the vote of thanks. Uh, thank you, Krishna, madam. So I just want to thank our team, sir, uh, to facilitate us for our uh, this online international workshop. And thank you, uh, Dr. Catherine. You have spared your time, valuable time. And I think it's uh, 6 15 a.m. there in Netherlands. Uh, still, you woke up and uh, uh, spared some time for us. Uh, thank you, Himanchu, sir, uh, DDH, sir, um, for sharing your valuable time. In spite of his uh, busy schedule, uh, he sh shared a lot of time for us. Uh, thank you all and thank you first of all th and uh, lastly I thank uh, our uh, students who are present in our uh, hall and they are watching all the videos and they have uh, they want to uh, sh means increase their knowledge on our uh, traditional values of India regarding our Vriksha Ayurveda. Uh, so thank you all. Thank you my uh, uh, colleagues over here who inspired me for this uh, international one day workshop and they also uh, attending uh, all the sessions and they are going to attend all the sessions uh, patiently. Thank you all. Thank you so much ma'am and uh, so now it's time for the technical session where we will dive deep into the world of agro ayurveda and I would like to request Pragranshi, ma'am, to take the session forward. Thank you, Krishi, madam. Uh, so our first speaker is Dr. Sunita Pandey, madam. Uh, she is professor in the Department of Agronomy at GBPUT Pantanagar and executive secretary of Asian Agri History Foundation. She will enlighten us on Kunab Jal. She is... Uh, having 32 years of teaching, research, and extension experience. And she is, uh, uh, she is having uh, 10 uh, research projects on Riksha Ayurveda, and uh, still she is continuing uh, her uh, new uh, research project on Riksha Ayurveda Center for Research and Training uh, by uh, IKS, Indian Knowledge System, Division of Ministry of education uh, government of india and she has uh, uh, around uh, 20 msc students and four phd students and as a uh, alumni of bantnagar uh, i thank you ma'am for joining us here ma'am uh, please uh, share your uh, knowledge to our students uh, a very good morning to all. In fact, uh, right now I am in Toronto, Canada, and I'm connecting myself from there itself. So, first of all, um, I welcome uh, Chief Guest of the event, uh, Mr. Himanshu Shekhar Sahu, 
Deputy Director, Department of Horticulture, Government of Orissa. Then our guest of honor, Katrina from Netherlands. She is Executive Director uh, in Natural uh, Livestock Farming. And uh, the Dean, the Organizer Dean, uh, Dr. Saman, and all the esteemed speakers and fellow participants. Uh, in fact, uh, first of all, at outset, I wish to congratulate uh, the organizer, uh, that is uh, the University of Agriculture in Orissa, uh, in College of Horticulture, in collaboration with the IKS, Indian Knowledge System of Ministry of uh, uh, Education, as well as Asian Agri History Foundation, headquartered at GB Pant University of Agriculture and Technology, uh, to disseminate and to establish the Ayurveda globally for benefiting the plants, animals, humans, and environment. Uh, and this event is very important because it's a part of the international event being celebrated by 100 countries across the world to establish the value of Ayurveda uh, objecting to the One Health concept. So with this word, I will start my topic, which is a very specific, because if we see the Vraksha Ayurveda, it has great, great, great dimensions. But today's topic is just the tip of the iceberg. That is the Panap Jal. It is a very, very powerful uh, growth stimulant bio, uh, bio uh, this fertilizer. So I will be focusing on that particular uh, subject that is Kunap Jala. So I would like to um, share my PPT. Can you see my um, PPT? Can you see my PPT, please? Hello. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. It's so, visible. Okay. So I'll be talking on Kuna Pajala, which is the first liquid fermented organic biofertilizer. Is there any problem? No, madam, please. Okay. So, this is the first liquid fermented organic biofertilizer, an ingenious innovation. And this is a precious Indian gift to the world. A thousand years old legacy of Vedya Surpala's Raksha Ayurveda. So this is, in fact, a very good, precious gift to the world. And uh, in this uh, deliberation, I would like to touch very quickly the heritage perspective of Kunapajal, then the qualities of Kunapajal, then uh, the Kunapajal has been modified to herbal Kunapajal, then the analysis of herbal Kunapajal, then shelf life of herbal kunapajal, then some of the results and the scientific validation trial conducted in our university uh, on kunapajal, then some of the success stories uh, through the demonstrations uh, I would like to show you, and then some of our current publication, which I have published, uh, particularly in this year only, 22-23. And then some of the work, uh, validation work, which has been uh, taken up by um, other social groups, very important social groups. So I will start this. And before I start my presentation, let me go. Uh, in fact, I usually go to Dr. Yashwant Lakshman Nene, 
uh, who was a real rare extraordinary plant pathologist and i will say that he is he may be called the modern surpala modern surpala surpala because he is the writer of a compilation book on vraksha ayurveda so uh, we may call him because of his path breaking efforts through the asian agri history foundation for bringing the knowledge of raksha ayurveda in the public domain and his contribution to the ancient and medieval knowledge of agriculture especially in india is the novel and immensely useful and will be remembered for all time so i will start uh, my presentation uh, you can see the journey of uh, kunapajal uh, it has been Uh, uh started from 1000 ad and mentioned by vaidya surpala in vraksha ayurveda from the verses 101 to 105 because I, I, as i already explained that vraksha ayurveda has thousand number of means number of dimensions but uh, the kunapajala has been explained from 101 to 105 verses of uh, vraksh ayurveda written by rishi surpala in 1000 ad then again after some time in another vraksh ayurveda chapter uh, in lokopakara which is a document written by chamundraya in 1025 ad so it has little bit little bit modification then Uh, again in uh, another document called upavan vinoda uh, written by sarangadhara uh, the verses 171 to 174 during 1283 to 1301 the uh, anapjala has been explained then uh, in vishwavallam it is another document uh, explaining the vraksha ayurveda written by chakrapani mishra uh, during 1577 ad and the last mention of raksha ayurveda where the kunapajala has been mentioned is uh, in shiv tattva ratna ratnakar written by king basavraj during 1725 ad and after this uh, the mention of raksha ayurveda in the academics or in the practice is is not available uh, but uh, uh, and here you can see the verses in uh, the um, the surpalas vraksha ayurveda and the verses regarding the uh, kunapajala original kunapajala verses number 101 to 106 you can see the methodology i am not going into the details how it is made but in nutshell the basis the raw material were animal based uh, the kunapajala and later on it was modified to plant based and we call it now herbal kunapajala so this you can see from 101 to 106 verses of raksha ayurveda uh, surpalas raksha ayurveda how this uh, animal uh, waste were used for preparing the kunapajala which which uh, is the highly nourishing for the tree not only nourishing but also to some extent the plant protection part is also involved and uh, to some extent the lightening effect uh, is also covered uh, after the application of uh, uh, kunapajala so it is a very wonderful and very powerful uh, fermented liquid fermented bio stimulant or bio fertilizer and this establishes the that uh, the natural farming or we can say the organic farming or natural farming is all the roots are in vraksha ayurveda all kind of natural farming we are talking nowadays the roots are in vraksha ayurveda so this is another uh, documents where the methodology of making the kunapajal has been mentioned is the vishwavallam so all animal waste products have been used uh, to prepare the kunapajal the liquid manure 
this konap uh, uh, gel is, as I already told, that's the completely anaerobic fermented biofertilizer uh, developed by animal waste. And konap, it's a Sanskrit word which means the stinging, bad uh, uh, this thing, you know, smell. Uh, and uh, later on, the product was modified into vegetarian product by Sri Sri Nivasan Ayengar. Uh, a mathematician uh, during 2004 and again it was modified by Dr. Y. L. Nene uh, in 2011 and it is now it is known as Herbal Kunapajala and where the number of local weeds were added. Uh, I, will, I will be explaining uh, in nutshell the composition of uh, Herbal Kunapajala in the uh, forthcoming slides and uh, their uh, advantage and how it is used being used and uh, it's successful uh, successfully conducted the validation trials so these are some of the components uh, now we uh, should know that why kunapajala is effective because uh, in kunapajala there is uh, breakdown of complex compound into the lower molecular weight compounds during the fermentation of ingredients uh, so that uh, it can be utilized by the plant or uptake is very fast. Take this goes directly to the rhizospheric zone of the plant and it uh, also enhances the immunity, vigor and quality. It is a number of workers, number of the researchers now have started working on Kunapajala and it has been established now that it encourages the soil beneficial microorganisms and uh, soil health, improvement in soil health and it also enhances the physical health of soil because once the physical health of the soil is improved, then only the biological health is improved and then the chemical health is improved because uh, we all we all know that uh, the plants uptake all the nutrients in the form of plants. So, for the betterment of chemical health, the physical health of soil is very very important, and the role of herbal kunapajala is is tremendous in improving the physical health of soil. It also acts as biopesticides mm -hmm. and. Uh, if we see that collectively, it facilitates the overall health system of the soil. And uh, this, the, the very important thing uh, with Kunapjana is it has very uh, tremendous, uh, I can say, the flexibility in preparation, particularly original Kunapjana. Uh, we do not have in our uh, old scriptures, we do not have the quantities of uh, various composition uh, material but uh, it has uh, uh, very good flexibility by using the local resources uh, as per the availability. Now, if we see the herbal kunapajala, the compo um, composition is like this. Uh, this is, uh, then again, I'll say that we are in the process of standardizing and we have standardized up to some extent the quantity of various components and the quantity of its application and the frequency of its application and uh, we quantified in fact and this you can see the uh, the average uh, composition of herbal kunapajal and i would like to mention here that uh, various kinds of uh, gavya we say sasya gavya or Jivamrat or Sanjeevak or even this Jivamrat or Amrit Pani, they all are fermented uh, products and uh, they may be called the variants of Kunapajal because the basic philosophy uh, is rooted in Vraksha Ayurveda. So I say the variants of Kunapajala. These all are the variants of Kunapajala which we use in natural farming or organic farming. Now directly I will go to some of the validation trials on herbal Kunapajala which we have conducted in our university, uh, GB Pant University Agriculture and Technology 
And the, the best part is that we have Asian Agri History Foundation headquartered in the university as our knowledge partner. So <laughs> we are doing the exclusive work on herbal kunapajala across the uh, crops and across the kinds of soil. Now you can see this is a research group uh, team on Vrakshayrvil who is carrying out the Vrakshayrvil based natural or Javik farming in our university. This is a multidisciplinary team having microbiologists, biotechnologists, soil scientists, agronomists, plant pathologists, entomologists, etc. Et so we have uh, we are doing tremendous work on Vrakshayr Veda and you can see some of the uh, trials uh, on uh, herbal kunapajala and we have tested the physical, chemical and biological properties of herbal kunapajala and then we have conducted uh, various experiments uh, across the various various kinds of crops like chickpea. Then uh, we have done uh, on uh, this lychee crop, this is rose scented variety. Then one of the medicinal aromatic, aromatic crops, that is, uh, this is uh, Meticaria chamomile, a very high value medicinal crop, then uh, medicinal as well as aromatic. And then uh, we have done uh, with uh, this gladiolus, it's a very commercially high commercial value crop, uh, flower crop. And then we have also conducted experiment uh, to see the uh, this herbal kunapjal affects on seed priming, how uh, the priming with herbal kunapjal affects the seed establishment and uh, uh, the yield also. Then eco-friendly management of black scarf of potato uh, by needle-based herbal kunapjal. Because as I said that the herbal kunapjal has uh, a very good flexibility. We can have n number of n numbers of uh, herbal kunapjal um, based on the local resources we use. Uh, so this is uh, we done, and we also quantified the antifungal properties of the Vrakshayr with based herbal kunapjal against the seed born fungi. So we, we are doing in, in our university with the multidisciplinary team, several kinds of work, uh, uh, this uh, and testing the efficacy of herbal kunapajal. So I will show some of the slides, uh, that is uh, how we are going to quantify the various aspects of herbal kunapajala. So we have analyzed the herbal kunapajala and we saw that it contains the macronutrients, micronutrients, and it has very wonderful this uh, biological properties, having good bacterial count, fungi, and actinomycetes. So it has uh, tremendous, uh, you see, the nutrients as well as uh, the biological properties. And uh, we also uh, measured its shelf life, and we saw that uh, the when we apply the fresh kunapajala, the effectivity is more. And as soon as we keep it, the shelf life is. Uh, this is this 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 slide is uh, showing uh, the outcome after 90 days uh, of planting, but. Later on, I quantified and I concluded uh, that uh, within 15 days, after 15 days, the, the, the contents of nutrients as well as the microbes uh, gets reduced uh, in uh, this uh, herbal kunapajala. So we need to be very cautious while using and while keeping the herbal kunapajala because the shelf life is... 15 and at the most 20 25 days. So these are some of the nutrient contents and they are reducing with time. You can see uh, these are the various kinds of uh, herbal kunapajala. Natal based herbal kunapajala. Natal is a, in fact uh, uh, because we are in Uttarakhand and natal is a grass uh, which is in fact a weeds found in abundant. And it has a tremendous potential of nutrients uh, within it. And that is why we used it in herbal kunapajala. So 
the composition of herbal kuna pajala varies from place to place and resources to resources and we use we need to use the local resources to reduce the uh, cost of the product so you can see the we we have quantified uh, micronutrients and uh, zinc iron copper magnesium and we we saw that uh, with time there is decrease in the contents of uh, uh nutrients uh, and uh, particularly uh, the biological activity of the herbal kunapjal gets reduced in this slide you can see it very clearly the microbial contents the highest at 15 days and it reduces slowly then in 30 days it is very very less and 45 days onward uh, there is almost uh, no activity biological activity so the farmers uh, should be very cautious while applying this herbal kunapajal in crops um, looking to their the biological activity because this is the main uh, activity um, on account of which it has its own importance this you can see the population of fungus the same the highest uh, population is at 15 days and then it reduces uh, same is with the actinomycetes this uh, highest is at 15 days so the shelf life uh, is uh, restricted so we need to be very cautious um, in this slide uh, i have tried to use the Uh, the urine and dung of uh, the desi cow and cross bred and i found that uh, when we use the cross bred uh, cow urine and cow dung there is reduction in the biological activities so you can see in this also so uh, we should uh, give priority to the desi cow and if it is not available then uh, definitely we can go for uh, cross bred but we should pr give priority to the desi cows this is uh, my field uh, laboratory we are making this concoctions various kinds of concoctions uh, these are my students doing work on herbal kunapa jala and now i would like to show some of the experiments very quickly outcome of some of the experiments very quickly uh this is the experiment uh, on chickpea and uh, we concluded that the seed priming with 10% integrated herbal kunapajala that is 50% nettle grass we have used and 50% local weeds was found superior to enhance the seedling vigor of chickpea seed and in field also we saw the good results of 10% integrated herbal kunapajala along with the foliar application of 10% herbal kunapajala most effective one so uh, this is uh, another experiment and uh, where we saw the impact of raksha arveda based liquid fermented organic manure uh, formulation and their doses on mustard productivity and we could standardize that 2000 liters per hectare showed the yield advantage and better soil properties as compared to other herbal kunapajala uh, concoctions and doses because we tried uh, three types of kunapajala so the types of kunapajala then dose and the frequency we, we are trying to standardize uh, and the better part is uh, while using this structure with based herbal kunapajala the yield advantage is uh, Uh, we got from first year only uh, because usually we say that in case of organic farming we get results from third year onward but in case of this uh, herbal kunapajala we got result from first year onward and this is the bc ratio we got the best bc ratio while this uh, applying this uh, herbal kunapajala nettel based herbal kunapajala this is a very interesting experiment we conducted in case of lychee because when we prepare the planting material for lychee there is a uh, survival percentage is quite low but when we treated the planting material with herbal kunapajala then we uh, could get the 98 to 100% survival 
of vegetative this uh, planting material so uh, this uh, and we tested the chlorophyll content uh, carotenoids phenols flavonoids and all of this proline content catalase content on, on the basis of all these data we established that the use of herbal kunapajala you can see this data all data the survival percentage is increased uh, in comparison to control and in comparison to the seaweed extract or there is a chemical which we use normally we use this chemical uh, trichotenol and other chemicals also we use so when we compared with uh, herbal kunapajala survival percentage has increased this is because the because of the high this uh, carotenoids phenol flavonoids and the proline content so uh, we are establishing the facts that uh, or we are trying to quantify uh, the effect of herbal kunapajala on account of various parameters that it is better option you can see the picture uh, the herbal kunapajala they showed the good growth and uh, survival percentage of planting material in lychee now the very interesting result we got in case of the uh, and we saw that uh, uh, while applying the herbal kunapajala, even the secondary metabolites of uh, this uh, meticaria chamomile, it enhanced secondary metabolites. Also enhanced the biological yield and herbage yield and secondary metabolites. So, and number of bioactive compounds were also increased. So this is a very good achievement and another experiment in case of blood drive we conducted because it is it has high commercial value and we saw that the 10% dilution in 1 liter integrated herbal kunapajala and foliar spray of different doses of integrated herbal kunapajala, it increased uh, the weight of corn, diameter of corn, number of cormels per plant and weight of cormels per plant uh, in case of bladulite. So this is a very good result of uh, using herbal kunapajala. Some of my students, they are working on uh, gladulite crop. And uh, this is a study on needle-based uh, Vrakshayurved concoction herbal kunapajala on crop establishment, crop establishment. So we did priming. And uh, after priming, we could see that uh, there is good seedling length, good seedling dry weight, and the vigor, the vigor has been increased when we prime the seed with herbal kunapajala. So you can see the picture. Uh, this is uh, the control one. This is the treatment of uh, herbal kunapajala. So, and uh, we can conclude that uh, the herbal kunapajala also works while the priming of seeds or seed treatment. Then uh, the eco-friendly management of black scarf potato by herbal kunapajala. Uh, this uh, you can see uh, that uh, uh, we got very good result. Uh, the best uh, recorded 83.54% inhibition of the uh, solenoid mycelium at 20% concentration under in vitro condition. So this uh, also give good plant protection. This uh, use of herbal kunapajala gave very good plant protection in case of this uh, potato crop. And uh, you can see the data again, the effect of different kunapajala based treatment on radical mycelial growth of herbascular solenoid. So, on the basis of the result obtained, it has been concluded that uh, the five Kunapajala based formulation are effective against all kinds of pathogen inhibiting the fungus growth. So, you can see the data inhibition of mycelial growth and mycelial growth. So, this is uh, also a wonderful result. Uh, now, I would like to show you some of the demonstration because we got very good result across the crops. And then we conducted some of the demonstration in our university. Uh, this is the use of uh, herbal kunapajala in paddy crop. Wonderful crops. I 
uh, God, uh, in fact, I'm doing the use of herbal kunapajala in paddy crop since last three to four years. And very good, very good results uh, I'm getting. Uh, I'm not using any kind of chemical or pesticide or insecticide in this crop. This is uh, the result of uh, 2019. And uh, this is also 2019 crop. And this is the crop 2020 paddy crop. So tremendous uh, potential of uh, herbal kunapajala in case of paddy crop. And uh, uh, as uh, we all know that diversity is the uh, requirement of uh, natural farming or Brakshire with farming. So we conducted a demonstration having five crops at a time. Beet and mystic pea and then uh, methi uh, and then uh, this uh, genda crop and then uh, I also took a chili and uh, the demonstration value of this crop was wonderful and I used all the protocol of Rakshire with based natural farming uh, uh, plus this herbal kunapjal as, um, as the nourisher and plant protection. This is one of the another experiment conducted by one of my MSc students on Tulasi, Basil. Uh, it, it, it gave wonderful result, uh, the herbal kunapajal and uh, the use of uh, the, the production of uh, herbage yield of Tulasi crop. This is another, the repetition. Now you can see the farm of uh, natural farming. Uh, we have taken number of crops uh, using herbal kunapajala. The crops are, you can see this ladyfinger and to break the manatini, we have grown this brinjal, then tulasi crop, then soybean, then paddy, then the crop is surrounded by this green manure crop, bhecha. So we have uh, grown all these crops and we, in fact, uh, raised a demonstration trial in our university and where we used herbal kunapajala as uh, bio-fertilizer or growth stimulants in every crop. You can see the performance of crop. Yeah, this is our university's um, faculty and director research and other faculties. Uh, monitoring the performance of various crops, uh, uh, performance of various crops uh, um, uh, by application of herbal kunapajala. You can see the tremendous paddy crop, tremendous performance of paddy crop. Uh, the use of herbal kunapajala has proved its uh, um, the effectiveness in every crop. You can see uh, this is these are the crops. Different directions. So, on the basis of all these work, I narrated in nutshell because of the limitation of time. We have some of the publications on herbal kunapjal uh, during 22 to 23, especially. These publications are like this there are eight to 10 publications. Um, and then uh, uh, I got uh, uh, this, uh, I worked as a expert on Vrakshar Veda uh, in one of the documentary film, that is Ayurveda for One Health, and which, and this is a tremendous film, and which won uh, three prizes within a year, the Audience Choice Award at Rohip International Online Film Festival on 22nd December 2022. The second prize at the prestigious International Science Film Festival of India on January 21st, 2023. And this is the only film selected from India for first international premiere at the Academy of Interactive Entertainment, Canberra, Australia. So this, this is the achievement in fact. Uh, the Braksh Ayurveda can do wonders and especially in the present scenario. Uh, this is uh, really wonderful to have uh, uh, this uh, uh, herbal kunapjal as a gift by the India to the world. 
and these are some of the other uh, workers uh, doing uh, work on the uh, herbal kunapajala and also the original kunapajala these are some of the publications so work is going on and these are some of the social groups uh, they are doing wonders in fact uh, the scientific fraternities are yet to work more and more whatever we are seeing uh, in the farmers field if the farmer is applying the accurate protocol then the results are very good very good so these are some of the social group contributing a lot for enhancing the um, this the use of uh, herbal variants of herbal kunapjal there are number of uh, products be, which are being used uh, like jiva amrit like gokarpa amrit like amrit jal like panche gavya bokashi tea even compost tea so these all are the variants of herbal kunapjal are rooted in our vraksha ayurveda so and now very quickly within a couple of minutes i would like to share some of the success stories uh, we have uh, um, we, ha we are um, watching in our farmers field uh, this is you can see the effect of herbal kunapajala on uh, this adu crop and uh, there is a disease leaf curl disease in uh, this uh, adu uh in peach crop in uh, uttarakhand and when we treat this uh, or foliar spray by herbal kunapajala there is in fact it is a viral disease then also the frequent spray of herbal kunapajala this the plants gets uh, uh, the disease gets corrected and you can see the tremendous production of the speech in ramgarh block of district nanital in uttarakhand so this is one of our uh, i can say ambassador farmer who is now doing and who is teaching to others also the use of herbal kunapajala and it is his kiwi fruit uh, earlier uh, he was getting 10 kg from a, uh, this uh, of his uh, plant uh, one plant of kiwi and after the frequent spray of herbal kunapajala from the same tree he got 100 kg so 10 times increase he got so this this is in fact a tremendous a tremendous effect of uh, herbal kunapajala also in various kinds of vegetables we are getting good results in various districts of uttarakhand and uh, uh, this uh, use of herbal kunapajala uh, also uh, reflected very good results in kerala chapter of asian a uh, true kerala kerala chapter of asian agri history foundation and various uh, this uh, tea gardens especially in arunachal pradesh assam and northwest bengal uh, very good results because tea is a crop where lot of chemicals are required to grow a successful crop lot of problems of insect pest etc so navi got tremendous success this asian agri history foundation got tremendous success in tea gardens and you can see there is a disease of die back in tea and after application of herbal kunapajala is completely recovered completely recovered so this uh, we in fact published the asian agri history foundation published report number 1 on organic tea the vraksha ayurved experience you can if you can if you go through this book you will definitely um, derive pleasure because this is a book having number of kunapjal number of kunapjal uh, maybe uh, 25 kinds of number of kinds of uh, kunapjal the sri nivas ayangar has done a tremendous work uh, he has modified the kunapjal into herbal kunapjal during 2004 and conducted experiments on farmers field uh, and uh, got a tremendous success so one can go through this uh, organic tea evrakshar with experience and can have uh, enhance his or her knowledge uh, about the 
herbal kunapjal and its varieties. So, uh, 25 kinds of herbal kunapjal has been explained in this book. And in the, if we see in Kerala, lot of success we can see. Very good use of Rakshire with based herbal kunapjal is being uh, done in uh, Kerala. Uh, this you can see the um, uh, this uh, chameli flowers uh, infected by some disease and after treating uh, the by herbal kunapajal the crop uh, recovered fully and uh, very good jasmine buds the farmer got very good then after heavy rains and floods in 2019. Uh, there were uh, the herbal kunab gel was applied and it regained health and vigor in Kunur. And I visited Kunur district to see the use of herbal kunab gel and I was really surprised to see that every kind of vegetables, flowers, they have in fact workshare with based parchala at panchayat level. They are doing tremendous. The work in Kerala is going on tremendous on Brakshire So I visited Kunnur district and there they got uh, this project also the, the, uh, to produce the vegetable crops. These are the training programs going on on Herbal Kunapajala. So in last, I can conclude that again, I emphasize in fact, the, this herbal kunap gel or kunap gel is a tip of iceberg of Raksha Ayurveda. There is a lot need to be done in Raksha Ayurveda, starting from uh, this uh, seed treatment to the up to the post harvest. Not many research, R&D is required. And if we really want to see the success of natural farming, success of natural farming, then the Vraksh Ayurveda need to be studied in depth, in depth in various agroclimatic zones. And we need to standardize and we need to use all kinds of modern tools and technology. We need to integrate uh, in Vraksha Ayurveda. So with all these words, uh, I'll uh, stop here and I would be uh, happy if there are any questions. Madam, uh, one of our farmer is asking that uh, they are cultivating uh, in organic way. So how they can convert their uh, farm into Ayurvedic way? Will they feel uh, face any loss of crop or not suddenly? Okay. So if uh, any farmer, if he is or she is interested, uh, let me uh, stop sharing. Yeah. If any farmer is interested in doing Raksha Ayurveda, then he need to start from the uh, enriching his soil. And to enrich the soil, there is a preparation nowadays very popular that is Ghan Jeeva Mrit. So this herbal Kunapajan plus Ghan Jeeva Mrit, he need to apply it as much as he can because it requires very less amount of dung, very less amount of dung, because uh, I have scanned all uh, documents of Raksha Ayurveda, uh, um, number of documents I have scanned, and I found that there is no mention of FYM in our heritage. There is no mention. Because if, when we say to the farmers that apply FYM, so he will be requiring very huge quantity, which is not feasible, not practical. But in case of herbal kunapajal and uh, this dhanajiva uh, amrit, very less quantity of uh, dung and urine is required. And enhancement of biological, physical and chemical properties of the soil is very much. So to start with herbal kunapajal, application of herbal kunapajal with dhanajiva amrit, it will boost the soil health and from first year itself, the, there will be a good outcome. And then followed by 
first the enrichment of soil then seed treatment by herbal kunapajal then the frequent uh, this uh, application of herbal kunapajal either through irrigation or through foliar spray and then the mulching is also one of the protocol mulching so we need to follow whole protocol full protocol then only we definitely we will get the result from first year but we need to follow the full protocol that is land preparation then seed treatment then uh, the application frequent application of uh, herbal kunapajal and then uh, mulching as well because mulching has tremendous advantage and it is a part of raksha ayurveda so uh, in all kinds of crop the advantages are there yeah. thank you ma'am uh, thank you madam for enlightening us uh, about kunab jal uh, by your uh, lecture i think uh, many of farmers will get benefited and uh, as we have all uh, four five farmers with us in uh, this platform they will get benefit out of it uh, thank you madam thank you so now uh, we will uh, welcome dr pavan kumar pande sir uh, he is assistant professor department of sanskrit oh. vedic studies kumar bhaskar verma sanskrit and ancient studies university uh, his research area is vedic literature and allied literature and he has got uh, ved pandit puraskar in 2016 um, by uttar pradesh sanskrit sansthanam and he has uh, many more uh, papers and attended many conferences uh, national and international level so i welcome uh, dr uh, pavan pandey sir uh, to uh, deliver uh, some uh, uh, lecture on uh, uh, his uh, topic please sir okay thank you ma'am uh, am i audible yes sir okay uh, sabse pehle sabhi ko namaskar is workshop ke jo convener hai professor kc sir organizing secretary dr pragya shri mishra madam aur uh, sabhi jo team mein hai uh, और यहाँ जो उपस्थित अभी हमने जिनका सुना और सुनने वाले हैं डॉक्टर कैटरीन मैडम हिमांशु सर डॉक्टर सुनीता पांडे मैम डॉक्टर बेनीवाल सर कौटिल्य जी श्री रवि सिंह चौधरी जी श्री श्री राज एस के सर सभी को और जितने भी प्रतिभागी हैं सभी को नमस्कार मेरा जो आज का टॉपिक है वो है डायग्नोस्टिक ट्रीटमेंट प्रोटोकॉल फॉर प्लांट डिजीज एंड पेस्ट तो इस विषय में मैं हमारे भारतीय ज्ञान परंपरा में या जितने भी संस्कृत में उसके विषय में वृक्षायुर्वेद के में वर्णित चिकित्सा के बारे में है उसके बारे में मैं कुछ बताना चाहूँगा वृक्षायुर्वेद जैसा कि हम जानते हैं कि ये भी हमारे संस्कृति का अभिन्न अंग है ज्ञान परंपरा से जुड़ा है और हमारे ऋषियों ने जो हम उसका की पर्याप्त मात्रा में हमें सामने उपलब्ध होती है और जिस प्रकार से उन्होंने कहा है कि जिस प्रकार से मनुष्य और जीव और वृक्ष इनमें कोई भेद नहीं किया उन्होंने कहा हम देखेंगे महाभारत में कि कैसे वृक्षों में चे, चेतनत है उसके लिए वहां वर्णन किया गया है शांति पर्व में कि वृक्ष चेतन है और उनमें भी जीव है तो इस प्रकार इसलिए जिस प्रकार से आयुर्वेद का उपादेयता मनुष्यों के लिए है उसी प्रकार से वृक्षों के लिए भी है वृक्ष आयुर्वेद से संबंधित अनेक ग्रंथ प्राप्त होते हैं या उसकी चर्चा में प्राप्त होती है सर्वप्रथम वेदु में ही ऋग्वेद में वृक्षों की अत्यंत महत्व बताया गया है प्राणोवयी वृक्षा वनस्पत उसको प्राण बताया गया है उसी प्रकार से यजुर्वेद में अथर्वेद में वृक्ष के वृक्ष चिकित्सा और वृक्ष संबंधित तथ्य हमें प्राप्त होते हैं तत्पश्चात वेदांग साहित्य में वृहद संहिता वराह मिहिर द्वारा रचित वृहद संहिता सिक्स सेंचुरी तत्पश्चात वृक्षायुर्वेद सूरपाल का वृक्षायुर्वेद पराशर का वृक्षायुर्वेद कृषि पराशर उपवन विनोद विश्ववल्लभ इत्यादि ग्रंथों में वृक्षायुर्वेद से संबंधित अनेक तथ्य हमें प्राप्त होते हैं उसमें 
इस प्रकार से चिकित्सा बताई गई है उसको मैं यहाँ संक्षिप्त में प्रस्तुत कर रहा हूँ जैसा कि मैंने कहा कि उपवन विनोद में कहा गया है कि नराणाम यो वृक्षाणाम वात पित्थ कपारुजा संभवंति निरूप्यात कुरिया तदोष नाशनम अर्थात नराणाम यो वृक्षाणाम वात पित्त कपारुजा नर नर के समान मनुष्य के समान वृक्ष के भी वात पित्त कफ जन्य रोग होते हैं दो प्रकार के रोग पहले सबसे पहले तो चिकित्सा में डिजीज में दो प्रकार के बताए गए फर्स्ट है आंतरिक रोग और बाह्य रोग अर्थात एक्सोजिनस डिजीज एंड एंडोजिनस डिजीज ये दो प्रकार के रोग बताए गए हैं तो आंतरिक में बताया गया है कि जो आंतरिक कौन सा होगा तो वात पित्त कफ से जो डिजीज होते हैं उसे आंतरिक रोग एक्सोजिनस डिजीज कह कह सकते हैं और जो अत्यधिक ठंडी गर्मी क्रीमी कीट इत्यादि के द्वारा जो रोग होता है वो बाह्य रोग एंडोजिनस डिजीज है तो इसी प्रकार से दो प्रकार से हाँ तो सबसे पहले जैसे कि वृहद संहिता में भी वराह मिहिर ने कहा कि शीत वात पई रोगो जायते पांडुपत्रता अवृद्धि प्रवाला नाम शाखा शोषो रस श्रुति तो शीत वाता तपई ही रोगो जायते वृक्ष वृक्ष को शीत के द्वारा अत्यधिक शीत लग जाए वात अत्यधिक वायु हो आतप हो धूप से भी रोग उत्पन्न होते हैं ये बाह्य रोग है तो इसके लक्षण क्या है कैसे हम जानेंगे कि वृक्ष रो, रोग से ग्रसित है या रोगी है तो सबसे पहला उन्होंने सिम्टम बताया इसका पांडुपत्रता उसके पत्ते जो हो पीले हो जाएंगे सेकेंड अवृद्धि प्रवाला नाम उसके वृद्धि रुक जाएगी अंकुर उसमें फल पुष्प इत्यादि नहीं लगेंगे अवृद्धि प्रवाला नाम शाखा शोषा तृतीय तृतीय में उन्होंने बताया कि शाखाएं जो है वो सूख जाएंगी उसकी वृक्ष की और चतुर्थ रस श्रुति ही कि उससे रस निकलने लगेगा एक तो ये इस तरह से जब एक लक्षण जिस वृक्ष में दिखाए दिखाई दे तो हमें समझना चाहिए कि वो बीमार है तो सबसे पहले आंतरिक जो रोग है एक्सोजिनस डिजीज उसके बारे में वात पित्त कफ के वैषम्य से मनुष्यों में रोग होता है और वृक्षों में भी होता है तो इसके उपचार भी हमें अनेक वृक्ष आयुर्वेद ग्रंथ में प्राप्त होते हैं सर्वप्रथम हम वात रोग की चर्चा करेंगे तो वा एक, एक तो वात रोग के लिए बताया गया है कि जो वृक्ष वात रोग से सूख जाते हैं गाठे बन जाती हैं, तो उन वृक्षों को गोबर भल्ला तक तथा मज्जा के मिश्रण के लेपन से अथवा कुणप जल के छिड़काव करने से कुणप जल जिसका अभी आदरणीय डॉक्टर सुनीता पांडे मैडम ने बहुत विस्तृत उसका डिटेल से और उसके प्रभाव भी बताए तो उसका है ही सब जगह वर्णन है और वह बहुत लाभकारी है वृक्षों के लिए तो उस जल के कुणप जल के सेचन छिड़काव से इन वृक्षों के रोगों का निदान किया जाता है और और भी उपाय बताए गए हैं जैसे अश्वगंधा पवनारी नाग तथा कणों से तैयार हुए काढ़े का छिड़काव और शत पुष्पिका के साथ मिश्रित जल के छिड़काव करने से गंभीर से गंभीर रोग से ग्रसित वृक्षों का उपचार हो जाता है जिस तरह से बताया गया कि जय वात भवान रोगान मानस मेदो वसा भृत ही सेक पुणपतो सर्व वात विकार अनुद तो इस प्रकार से सभी वात रोगों का नाश हो जाता है पित्त रोग की चिकित्सा के लिए वृक्ष आयुर्वेद में विश्व वल्लभ के द्वारा जो रचित है उसमें बताया गया है कि पित्त रोग से जो वृक्ष क्षीण हुए और वृक्ष की चिकित्सा उस वृक्ष की चिकित्सा शीतल एवं मधुर पदार्थों से तथा यश की मधु मधुक दुग्ध और मधु के काढ़े से वृक्षों की सिंचाई करनी चाहिए इससे पित्त रोग वृक्ष का पित्त रोग दुष्ट दूर होता है और उपाय बताए गए हैं कि वही त्रिफला घृत एवं शहद के मिश्रित वात से वृक्षों का सेचन करने से समस्त वृक्षों के समस्त पित्त विकार नष्ट होते हैं यह बताया गया है यथा शीत तलैर मधुर प्रायर द्रव्य ही पित्त समुद्भवान सर्वभूरु जाति नाम रोगा नये 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 सुधी ही इस प्रकार से पित्त रोगों का नाश होता है कफ रोग कफ रोग से यदि कोई वृक्ष ग्रसित है तो उसकी चिकित्सा के लिए वृक्ष आयुर्वेद में भी उपाय बताए गए हैं ऐसे वृक्षों को सुगंधित जल के साथ पंचमूल पांच वृक्षों की प्रजाति की जड़ों श्रीफल सर्वतो भद्र पाटल गनिकारिका एवं सियोनाक से बने कषाय एवं कटु तीक्ष्ण से करना चाहिए 
और दूसरी उपाय और भी बताया गया है कि इसी प्रकार सफेद सरसों की लुगदी को जड़ों में डालकर वृक्षों को तिल और राख के मिश्रण से सिंचित करके तथा वृक्षों के चारों ओर से वहां की जो मिट्टी है जड़ में उस मिट्टी को हटाकर और शुद्ध और सूखी मिट्टी अलग से फिर डाल देनी चाहिए इससे वृक्ष की जो चिकित्सा ग्रंथ में कप चिकित्सा के लिए कटु अम्ल कषाय एवं उष्ण जल से वृक्ष की सिंचाई करने की चिकित्सा बताई है कषाय कटु तीक्षण रोगान कप कृता जयत पंचमूल इस प्रकार से उपाय करने से और कफ रोग की निवृत्ति होती है तत्पश्चात वृक्षों की चिकित्सा के विषय में चक्रदत्त ने चिकित्सा संग्रह नामक ग्रंथ में बात व्याधि चिकित्सा में वृक्षों की चिकित्सा के विषय में एक ऐसे तेल का उल्लेख किया है जिससे सूखे वृक्षों की जड़ों में जड़ जो है पुनर्जीवित हो जाते हैं उसका भी उल्लेख उन्होंने किया है तत्पश्चात हमें ये आंतरिक चिकित्सा हो गई बाह्य चिकित्सा उस संदर्भ में जब बाह्य चिकित्सा में अत्यधिक शीत आतप अग्नि से जल जाना इत्यादि कृमि चिकित्सा कीट कृमि कीट इत्यादि की चिकित्सा बताई गई है तो सबसे पहले कृमि चिकित्सा के बारे में बात करते हैं तो इसकी चिकित्सा हमें सर्वप्रथम वेद में ही प्राप्त होता है और अथर्वेद में एक कृषि जंभन सूक्त है जिसमें जिसके द्वारा कीटों का नाश किया जाता है तो कृषि जंभन सूक्त में कीटों को नष्ट करने का सर्वप्रथम उल्लेख प्राप्त होता है जिसमें ऐसे कीट का वर्ण है जो नेत्रों से दिखाई देते हैं और जो नहीं दिखाई देते अत्यंत सूक्ष्म है ऐसे सभी कीटों को नष्ट करने का विधान बताया गया है और दूसरा उपाय है औषधि के द्वारा एक तो मंत्र प्रयोग है दूसरा औषधि प्रयोग औषधि के द्वारा वच नामक औषधि के द्वारा कीटाणुओं का नाश किया जाता है यथा मंत्र में अथर्वेद में कहा गया है कि दृष्ट मदृष्ट मतृह तो करो रुवा मृत्रिहम अलग गंडून सर्वान छलून कृमीन वचसा जम्भयामसी इस प्रकार से यहाँ वर्णन प्राप्त है तथा कीटाणुओं को नष्ट करने का उल्लेख सर्वप्रथम अथर्वा नामक औषध जो ऋषि हैं उन्होंने किया था उनके पश्चात कश्यप कण्व अगस्त्य आदि ऋषियों ने इन रोगों क्रीम क्रीमियों को नष्ट किया था और मंत्रों में औषधियों का वर्णन भी है जैसे गूगल पिलू नलदी औषधंधी प्रमोदनी औषधियों के द्वारा पादप रोगों के विनष्ट का उल्लेख प्राप्त होता है यथा त्वया पूर्व मथारवाणी जघ्नु रक्षांश औषधे त्वया ग्रहान कश्यप स्वया कण्डो अगस्त्य ये सभी द्रव्य जो है औषधियां हैं एक तो इसका हवन के रूप में प्रयोग करके हम हवन करें जो जहां वृक्ष बीमार है उसके समीप में हवन के द्वारा उन औषधियों का उसमें प्रक्षेप करें आहुति दे और उससे जो है वो उस वृक्ष का आरोग्य होता है और दूसरा है कि इसका हम जल में मिला के प्रयोग कर सकते हैं तो दो प्रकार के प्रयोगों का यहाँ वर्णन बताया गया है और भी औषधियों का उल्लेख है जैसे कि अश्वत्थ न्यग्रोध महावृक्ष शिकुंडी हरित अर्जुन आघात अपाम अपामार्ग अपश्मी हिरण्यानी इत्यादि औषधियों के द्वारा वृक्ष की चिकित्सा की जाती है कृमि चिकित्सा का उल्लेख वेद में प्राप्त होता है उसके बाद मंत्र के द्वारा भी कृमि चिकित्सा या की वर्णन प्राप्त होता है सबसे पहले वृक्षायुर्वेद में मंत्र के द्वारा जो मंत्र इस प्रकार से है कि स्वस्ति किश्किधा स्थित प्रकट पराक्रम अंतरहित अर्क कमंडल उपजीवित श्री हनुमान आज्ञा पयति मूषक पतंग पिपीलिका शलभ करभ अंबक कीटक गंधिका निवहर स्थातव्यम आज्ञा अतिक्रमण मानस्य शरीर निग्रह समावर्तयति इस प्रकार से यह मंत्र है और इस मंत्र में हनुमान जी को संबोधित किया गया है कि आप इन इन सब का नाश करें अनुवाद में संग, बता दे रहा हूं संक्षिप्त में मंत्र का भाव यह है कि हमारे जो वृक्ष हो सदा उन्नत हो सदा शुभ हो हे किश्किधा के परम वीर 
परमेश्वर परम वैष्णव के रूप में प्रकट होने वाले पराक्रम प्रदर्शक सूर्य को अपने मुखमंडल में लेने के का पराक्रम दिखाने वाले श्री हनुमान जिसके चरण हमेशा विजय की ओर बढ़ते हैं ऐसे अः रामचंद्र के सेवक तथा आप आप जो है क्षेत्र के चूहा टिड्डी पतंग कीट आदि को आज्ञा देते हैं कि वे सब उस क्षेत्र को छोड़कर अन्यत्र चले जाएं अन्यथा देवता विनाश के लिए बल का प्रयोग करेंगे तो इस मंत्र का प्रयोग प्राय बहुत आचार्यों ने किया है विश्ववल्लभ में है वृक्ष आयुर्वेद में है मंत्र मंत्र चिकित्सा के द्वारा कीट कीट इत्यादि का निवारण के लिए मंत्र का प्रयोग है यंत्र का प्रयोग भी एक बताया गया है कि इस यंत्र का प्रयोग मतलब इस मंत्र को एक केले के पत्ते पर लिख कर और जो क्षेत्र है जो स्थान है उसके मध्य भाग में उसका उसको जमीन के अंदर गाड़ देना है उससे भी कृमि रोग की चिकित्सा बताई गई है अनेक ग्रंथों में उपविनोद इत्यादि ग्रंथों में इस प्रकार से प्राप्त होता है बृहत संहिता नामक ग्रंथ में वराहमिहिर वृक्ष चिकित्सा के बारे में लिखते हैं एक अध्याय ही है वृक्ष आयुर्वेद फिफ्टी चैप्टर उसमें उन्होंने बताया है कि जिसमें जो रोगग्रस्त वृक्ष हैं, उनके वृक्ष के रुग्ण अंग को किसी शस्त्र से काटकर उस पर वाय विडंग घृत और पंख का अच्छी तरह से लेप करके उन वृक्षों को दूध मिश्रित जल से सींचना चाहिए चिकित्सक अथ एम शस्त्रे न आदो विशोधनम विडंग घृत पंक्ता सेचयत क्षीरवारिणा उन वृक्षों को इस तरह से सेचना चाहिए यही इसी तरह का अभिप्राय हमें कश्यप के द्वारा प्रणीत वृक्ष आयुर्वेद में मिलता है अग्नि पुराण में भी वृक्ष आयुर्वेद की चर्चा मिलती है प्राय समान ही श्लोक और विधि बताई गई है वहां चिकित्सा की विधि साथ ही साथ वृक्ष आयुर्वेद में बेहद सम्यता में बताया गया कि जिस वृक्ष का फल नाश हो रहा हो फल न आता हो या पत्र न आता हो पुष्प न आता हो उसके लिए उन्होंने बताया है उस उपाय बताया है कि जिसमें जिस वृक्षों जिस में फल न लगने न लगता हो ऐसे वृक्षों को कुल्थी उड़द मूंग तिल और जौ इन सबको दुग्ध दुग्ध में मिलाकर खोलाना चाहिए और जब दुग्ध ठंडा हो जाए तो वृक्षों का सिंचन करना चाहिए इससे वृक्षों में फल फूलों की वृद्धि होती है फलते हैं फूलते हैं इस प्रकार से वहां चिकित्सा बताई गई है जो जिस वृक्षों में बंध्या वृक्ष कह सकते हैं फल नहीं आता हो और उसके लिए कुणब जल कुणब जल तो एंटीबायोटिक की तरह है वो तो हरेक रोग में उसका प्रयोग कर सकते हैं उससे उसकी वृद्धि होती है और कुणब जल का कैसे बनाना है उसके लिए भी बताया गया है तत्पश्चात हम देखते हैं हिमपादादि पीड़ित तरु चिकित्सा अत्यधिक बर्फबारी हो जाए तो उससे वृक्षों को क्षति होती है अत्यधिक गर्मी हो जाए तो उससे भी उनको बीमार होते हैं तो उनके लिए बताया गया है कि अत्यधिक गर्मी से कोई वृक्ष झुलस जाए बर्फबारी या ओलावृष्टि अतिताप से अधिक से प्रभावित हो जाए तो उन वृक्षों को बाहर से ढक देना चाहिए तथा उन वृक्षों को कुड़ब जल और दुग्ध से सिंचित करने से वृक्षों को आराम मिलता है और पुनः ठीक हो जाते हैं जिस प्रकार से चिकित्सा संग्रह में यह उपाय बताया गया है अने नई वच शुष्यमाणा महा पुनः प्ररोहंती भवंती फलशालिन तत्पश्चात अग्नि दग्ध तरु चिकित्सा अग्नि से जो कोई जल जाए वृक्ष उसकी चिकित्सा के लिए वृक्ष की शाखाओं को शस्त्र से काट कर पहले पृथक कर ले और उस पर जल मिश्रित दूध से सिंचन करने करके तथा वृक्षों को केकड़े के कवच का धुआं देने से वृक्ष पर नवांकुर के रूप में फुटकर नए पल्लव आ जाते हैं अर्थात वृक्ष जो है वो निरोगी हो जाते हैं हिमचंडो तपार ताना कार्य माच्छादनम बही ही कुणपाबू पयोभिश्च परिशेक प्रशिष्य वृक्ष आयुर्वेद ग्रंथ वृक्ष के घाव भी हो जाते हैं कोई किसी शस्त्र से प्रहार कर दिया या जैसे भी उनके घाव ओके डॉक्टर पवन सर वी आर रनिंग शॉर्ट ऑफ टाइम इट वुड बी ग्रेट इफ यू कुड रैप अप ओके ओके तो हाँ बिल्कुल बिल्कुल ओके ओके मैम तो इस प्रकार से वृक्ष के घाव की चिकित्सा उसका भी वर्णन है प्रचंड वायु चिकित्सा वायु से वृक्ष भग्न हो जाए उसकी चिकित्सा कृमिजन्य का वेद में जो बताया गया था वो तो बताया ही मैं और वृक्ष आयुर्वेद में किस प्रकार से है उसमें भी हमें उपवन विनोद में विश्ववल्लभ में 
वृक्षायुर्वेद सूर्यपाल प्रणीत उसमें अग्नि पुराण में तत्पश्चात बृहद संहिता में प्राप्त होता है इसके उपाय और वृक्ष श्राव तरु चिकित्सा शीत दंध तरु चिकित्सा अजीर्ण वृक्ष चिकित्सा बंध तरु चिकित्सा इस प्रकार से वृक्ष के समस्त बाह्य अथवा अभ्यंतर दोनों प्रकार के रोगों की चिकित्सा बताई गई है और जो कि अत्यंत उपयोगी है वृक्ष यदि स्वस्थ रहे तभी हम स्वस्थ रहेंगे और इसी के साथ मैं अपने वाणी को विराम देता हूं आप सभी को नमस्कार धन्यवाद थैंक यू सर फॉर शेयरिंग योर वैल्यूएबल इनसाइट विद योर स्लोकाज एंड ऑल सो नाउ मूविंग फर्दर वी हैव मिस्टर जी कौटिल्य from the indian knowledge system ministry of education we will explore viksha ayurveda for soil health so i request uh, mr g kautalya to okay thank you ja ma ja namaste ah and thank you for giving the opportunity from uh, uh krishi jagran and uh, uh, agriculture university and uh, i can you know and uh, i love to thank uh, asian agri history foundation because uh, today uh, we are talking and uh, discussion and uh, some practical experiments and uh, the whole uh, ministries like ministry of education and animal husbandry and agriculture ministry all are taking some of the references from asian agri history foundation and uh, as a uh, because uh, they have done because of the work they have done uh, in the 90s now we are working on that i think it takes a few more years which have the work has done by them and uh, i i thankful to you the asian agri history foundation i am the team uh, organizing team uh, like krishi jagran and uh, the agriculture university horticulture university in the colleges uh, which are being the part of this and uh, we are very thankful and uh, the bharatiya gnan parampara vibhag of uh, ministry of education have invited us because uh, this is the ministry uh, ministry of education uh, as per the new education policy they have started indian knowledge systems uh, in uh, 2020 <coughs> pradhan mantri ji so uh, we do uh, we have uh, funding the universities like iitns and all these institutions uh, in 20 uh, uh, areas that like we can say the areas of research focus areas and all those uh, we have institutional internship programs research programs research projects and uh, uh, centers its research centers also you can uh, go through the website and we'll give the funding up to 40 lakhs uh, and uh, we are happy that uh, recently we have given uh, for uh, 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 asian agri history foundation as a research center uh, and uh, Uh, one of the STM College of Ayurveda from UDP, they have started doing uh, uh, Pashu Ayurveda, uh, uh, teaching the Pashu Ayurveda course to agriculture students, and uh, we have uh, some kind of uh, uh, research projects also, uh, which uh, Kamadenu uh, uh, University recently, and uh, not only that uh, uh, TDU from Bangalore, like that many are there. so uh, my topic was about uh, vruksha ayurveda uh, i know the experts are there here but uh, i just want to share something that most of the people don't know that uh, krishi uh, like parashara maharshi parashara he has written a book on vruksha ayurveda also so in that we have uh, you know most of the people uh, has not aware about the book uh, Vruksha Ayurveda written by Maharshi Parashara. So when we have taken some of the references That's from that, uh, from that, and when we have uh, done the research on that, in, uh, in the village uh, atmosphere, some kind of uh, Kunna Pajala and like uh, 
uh, the same reference from uh, Brihat Samhita as Pavanji has mentioned. So we have seen a quite interesting results and uh, I guess division we are promoting uh, in the farmers levels like we have done a Bharatiya Paramparika Kashi uh, in enlightening the farmers across the nation to give the awareness about this uh, Vriksha Ayurveda and uh, you know not only this from courses also. So uh, in this uh, as uh, most of you has uh, gotten information about Vriksha Ayurveda so I don't want actually uh, my theme was on uh, Maharshi Parashara, like Krishi Parashara, what I have started. Uh, so, uh, uh, Krishi Parashara is the book which has, uh, uh, you know, in present scenario, most of the agriculture universities has not been aware and uh, they are not, uh, uh, excuse me, just a minute, just a minute. Yeah, sorry. Uh, so uh, I'm just going on to Krishi Parashara because we have taken some uh, examples from that and we are doing the like nakshatra kind of uh, agriculture experiments and uh, some uh, some of the uh, like Vrushabhotsavam. So I just want to give an awareness about this. So uh, Vrushabhotsavam is a festival which we have started uh, in 2018 with some of the organizations. Now, uh, because in the present scenario, there, uh, we have the Krishi Parashara, like we have the Vriksha with all these books, but when it comes to, we are only not only working on the growth promoter or, uh, you know, pest control. This is the agriculture, we have the uh, Bharatiya heritage also, we can say, the culture and all those. So, there are some Utsavas are mentioned in the books. So, uh, today I just want to say regarding the just uh, about Rushabhotsavam because in present scenario, we don't even uh, have the bulls in our villages and uh, we don't have the carpenters who they are uh, 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 doing the plow, that kind of all the, you know, uh, agriculture practices. Now we lack of it and we are going into the modern. When we're going into the modern, we are lacking the, the main things which we are there uh, earlier. So like Vrishabha. So uh, what we are taking about the, uh, when we talk about the, you know, all type of, uh, you know, cow dung or cow milk and all those. So that will be cleared only with the Vrishabha. If the Vrishabha is not there, so everything will be the not exactly because the Gotra, the, all the Parampara has come from the Vrishabha. So for that, uh, Maharshi Parashara in his uh, Krishi Parashara treatise clearly mentioned that uh, uh, on the first day of Kartika, like how we are get affected when the season changes and the, even the Pashu also get changes. So it will be also affected. For that, there is a uh, kind of ritual. Uh, this is a kind of festival, I can say directly that uh, the Pashu will be treated as a in our family, in a community, and that should be, uh, you know, uh, done festival on that day. So the uh, Vrishabhotsava, uh, this time we are giving an awareness about uh, uh, across the nation. And uh, we have uh, uh, some some researches also we got to know that uh, Vrishabhotsava is not existing in India, but some in places like Indonesia and some kind of Netherlands and some other Australia, the government they are doing, but not in different places like cattle festival, it's kind of because they have taken the reference from our book, like uh, uh, Krishi Parashara, and they have uh, mentioned some of the characteristics, like what they have some kind of names like Brahmana and kind of. So they have taken that and they have made America, like Brazil, they have made it as a uh, Brahmana the breed. So you can Google it. So you'll get that. So these are all the breeds which are from our nation. But now in our uh, in our country, like in the place like Andhra Pradesh, Ongol, we don't even find those uh, breeds. So when it comes to the cow, when we uh, take care of this, all the products and all the panchagavya. So the base is the bull and the cow. So not only cow, bull has to be there. So uh, this time with the PMO, uh, we have uh, Pradhan Mantri, uh, Pradhan Mantri ji has launched uh, in 2006, 2014 about my cow. 
so in that we have taken five competitions uh, so i request all the people like uh, university and the faculty and the students can join and participate to give the awareness so uh, we have taken some five concepts like selfie with rushaba and uh, uh, you know a role making competition like uh, uh, a poster making competition for rushaba utsavam and uh, uh, a short reels and show your love for rushaba and slogan for rushaba utsavam and uh, ideas to preserve so sir please no, compile your lecture in uh, i just type done of... i just mm-hmm. done just just a minute yeah so okay sir uh so these are all the information uh, which we are giving awareness across and ministry of animal husbandry is also uh, taking a part in this so because uh, not only the doing agriculture is uh, uh, you know the basic thing the utsava that kind of things and the cultural heritage is also there in the agriculture and that we have to take it and we have to take it for the future generations like the desi seeds and these all experiment solutions these are all so i request everyone to participate and uh, let's all collaborate and let move forward and uh, jai hind uh, thank you sir uh, mr kotilya uh, for your uh, daily uh, activities in uh, uh, briksha ayurveda so now i request uh, mr ravi singh choudhary sir the director of dhanvantari natural foundation bukaro to share insights on uh, riksha ayurveda in landscaping and gardening so he has a uh, vast experience in uh, psu and now uh, he is uh, voluntarily uh, uh, doing uh, riksha ayurveda and uh, he is uh, author of three book books rishi intelligence krishi samhita and go samhita so uh, sir please Uh, share your uh, knowledge and uh, it's a kind uh, means request that please compile your lecture within uh, 10 minutes thank you sir okay uh, am i audible yeah. yes sir yes sir you are audible yeah thank you and my ppt is visible right now yeah okay yes sir okay so thank you so much uh, uh, odisha university uh, uh, for giving me this opportunity uh, to speak on vriksha ayurveda and very interesting topic on landscaping and gardening in vriksha ayurveda so it is very rare uh, when we uh, uh, discuss a topic like these uh, because uh, bio fertilizers and bio pesticide we find many of the shlokas in the vriksha ayurveda or the other text but uh the landscaping part and gardening part we misses uh, because it is the part of vastu shastra so <clears throat> uh coming to the slide yeah so modern landscaping uh, is considered to be uh, uh, means the way, uh, the part of permaculture and the natural farming or the agro ecological system because if you are not designing your farm <clears throat> ecologically or uh, with the principles of nature you will find uh, you will have issues with pest attack and many more so these are the seven principles of landscaping like symmetry focalization repetition simplicity unity enclosure and proportions i am putting these points because uh, we will now see that these things are inherent in uh, one of the shloka of the vriksha ayurveda so from surpala vriksha ayurveda the 94 uh, 94th verse we can find like <coughs> the uh, eight designs swastika charu charurastra sarvato bhadra vithi nikunj punja uh, mandapa and swastika and again uh, the nandya vart nandya vart is very much uh, uh, famous with uh, the jainism so this is the uh, basic design of the nandya vart so why we are talking about these uh, things and the landscaping in riksha ayurveda itself because the vata pitta and the kapha is not just inherent within the body of the plants it is also outside okay so we need to have the consideration to balance the tri dosha outside the plant body uh, also for the soil also to the microclimate then we talk about these landscaping designs and this is the one of the beautiful uh, design that uh, 
it is very much famous with uh, vedic architecture uh, they called sarvato bhadra so these are the 18 uh, rows and 18 columns are there so you can see that uh, there is inherent pathways there, there is a inherent uh, beautiful gardening concept within these uh, uh, words this sarvato bhadra so what is the principle behind uh, it, it is just the aesthetic part or is there some useful uh, uh, agro ecological management inherent to these designs so whenever we talk about vata pitta kapha it is always the uh, combination of the two uh, out of the panch mahabhuta like uh, the akash tattva is the very much inherent uh, all over places but the dominant part like vayu tattva when we combine it with akash tattva it is called the vata dosha okay then again pitta dosha is with uh, tejas the agni and the jala tattva and again the kapha is uh, jala tattva with prithvi tattva so uh, when we see the basics of the vastu shastra these are the uh, directions like eight directions are there uh, the ishan kon uh, the agniya kon the uttara dakshin purva pakshin so uh, whenever there is a mention of the ishan kon we want that place uh, the top right okay the top right uh, corner is like we need to have a open places uh, the inherent or the uh, fundamental flow of the air uh, should be there because uh, if it is not there if if ishan kon of that part is not uh, empty or or not much so much heavy uh, then there will be a dosha then there will be the dosha in the microclimate the vata pitta kapha so uh, these are the considerations uh, always there in vriksha veda but the shlokas are or the verses are very few in nature but you can see uh, in in modern concepts at the right side and the the light so uh, these are not just the aesthetic part uh, of uh, the farm uh, farm house but but also it is uh, it is taking care it, it is taking care of uh, heavy wind blow because uh, it is also uh, one of the cause for the uh, issues with our trees and the plants so you have to block uh, the wind blow from from the particular direction you have to see for the fundamental photosynthesis that like sunlight should reach uh, properly uh, to the each and every element of your farm so these are the basic considerations uh, which will resolve the vata pitta kapha dosha uh, in the microclimate uh, zone for the plants so you will have the uh, complete uh, three dosha resolve uh, resolved within your farm so these are the few slides that i have shown and the last slide is like uh, from vriksha veda itself like uh, we we see lot of activist uh, uh, in environment but uh, in our ancient time from vriksha veda and matsya puran like 10 wells equal to one pond and 10 pond equal to one lake and 10 lake equal to one sun and 10 suns equal to one tree so that's how uh, we are uh, giving uh, emphasizing the value of a tree it's like a 10 to the power 4 or 6 uh, to the wells so you can consider like uh, how we have treated uh, our ecosystem by uh, considering all these elements like pond is inherent part of your design means the water body the open water body well should be uh, the uh, inherent part of your garden so this is uh, from my side thank you so much uh thank you sir thank you for your uh um, vriksha uh, arvada on uh, landscaping because i am an expert in landscaping so i uh, it's very fascinating for me so now i i would like to welcome dr shriraj sk sir an associate professor at school of fundamental research in ayurveda kuhs tiruvan uh, Tripunithura, Kerala, uh, and uh, he has completed BMS and MD in Swastha Vidya from Government Ayurveda College, Tiruvananthapuram. He has 13 years of experience as assistant professor 
and um, he is associate professor now uh, and uh, currently he is working in fundamental research in ayurveda so he has guided 14 students uh, pg students and uh, i i want i welcome sir to speak about need for education on riksha ayurveda in the present era sir please sir I, it's kind request that please compile your lecture in 10 minutes sir uh Thank you. Uh, thank you, madam, for the introduction. And uh, uh, shall I share my screen with you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. okay. I think it is visible and I am audible too. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. I am from the Ayurvedic stream and Vriksha Ayurveda is uh, an extension of Ayurveda to the plant kingdom. So let us go to the, uh, this is my institution, the School of Fundamental Research in Ayurveda. It is an interdisciplinary Ayurvedic school established by the Kerala University of Health Sciences for interdisciplinary research in Ayurveda. And when it is fully operational, this upcoming institution will have 12 departments and 17 laboratories have international standards. And in the first phase, uh, we have phytochemistry lab, clinical lab, and computational biology lab. That's why we are uh, thinking about starting a course in Vrakshai Veda due to the phytochemistry availability of phytochemistry lab. And this will be completed within the six months period. And we have also MPhil on translational Ayurveda for <coughs> translational researches in Ayurvedic field. So the, uh, before going to the uh, need of the hour, we should address the contemporary issues in agriculture. The is from the Kerala scenario, the contemporary issues in agriculture are the degradation of nutritional composition of soil. And this gives a multitude of issues. There is inadequate amount of macronutrients, the NPKs, and severe deficiency of micronutrients. Even though some, some people are able to manage the macronutrient deficiency, they fail to uh, manage the micronutrient deficiency and the soil goes acidification and depletion of the carbon content of the soil because yes, while there we are adding bio manuals uh, prior to start the agriculture processes. But nowadays we are depending on synthetic chemicals and this will uh, lead to carbon depletion. And also, uh, as far as Kerala is concerned, after the 2018 mega floods, these things get more worse. Then this will affect the general condition of crops health. And this general immunity uh, or reduction in the immunity of the plant will give uh, more chance of the pathogenic microorganisms such as virus, fungus, and bacteria to flourish. And the trees are less able to combat emerging new type of infections. And it is experienced that the crops will exhibit an inability to resist the diseases and the diminished capacity to withstand changes in the climate and invading exotic weed species. For example, if you consider the Cocos nucifera, the bearing of the crops or bearing of the nuts will be lesser. Even if the nuts bear in adequate amount, the endocarp will be lesser or lesser in quantity. And even if endocarp is enough, oil content will be less. So this kind of plan, uh, this kind of uh, plan health, dimin diminishing plan health will lead to a, a, a decreased yield in the crops. The solution is crop health management in the holistic and sustainable way where Vriksha Ayurveda plays its food. Then a cube reference to Vriksha Ayurveda by Surapala and it's a historical text. The original copy is kept in England, unfortunately. The subject matter had hands pertain to a specific domain with the Ayurvedic tradition, namely the cultivation of plants by utilizing time honored agriculture methods. And the long-standing and proven practice of the past must be reintroduced into current practice. Why we learned this Vriksha Ayurveda and in the current scenario is uh, because of this and incorporating contemporary adaptations through the collaborations of different sectors and interdisciplinary research effort is the need of the hour. And uh, 
if you move if you move forward to the chapters quickly bhumi nirupana on soil selection and land classification and padavi vijana vistara is various plant propagation techniques and plant taxonomy visual padhi vidhi and bijo bazara explains various seed treatment methods to propagate or promote germination ropana vidhana tells how the plants and trees and saplings in the field layout and vrikshobana uh, udyana is emphasis on the economic importance and other advantage of growing plants and sinchana vidhana is about irrigation practices and padaba kudrishti nivarana explains the effect of taking place when someone approaches the plant with evil notation padaba rakshana vidhana discusses traditional practice to protect agriculture from from natural calamities yoga vikyanam describes about the deforestation and also the treatment of different diseases including pollutions 